going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday to you all. Uh, I'm Nick. I, if you didn't know that, uh, just uh, I think I do. I stop introducing myself. We've talked about this already. We talked about this already. Creature. But it's great. It's nice. It's formal. It's an introduction. Hey, everybody. You know? uh, Chrissy, how are you? I'm good. Chrissy, it's been a little bit of a week for me, but I'm good. Back. I'm good. Uh, yeah, uh, Chris is still on the East Coast. We are back in the studio, uh, at least for now. We'll be back and forth a little bit. I don't know if we'll be here full time, but it is it is nice to be back in the our studios here, um, slowly getting back to normal. We're still sanitizing yeah, like crazy. Uh, it is nice to just get out of the house. Uh, wow, I never thought I would uh, enjoy that. Get as out of the house. Speaking of houses, did you get your house? I uh, know. No. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I am I'm house hunting and I was really close to what I thought was going to get my dream home. Uh, I did not get it, which, you know, everyone's like, oh, you'll find something else. I really loved this one. I'm sad. I it what was really sucked is that I found out that I was like going to get the house. And then someone came at the last minute and, and offered a kind of a, a deal they couldn't pass up on. Only to find out that the uh, the seller of the house realized who I was, and apparently the person who uh, got the house, and you know, and, and anything can happen. I guess it hasn't officially closed yet, but apparently it's a single mom who 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 <laughs> recently got out of divorce. So they're like, "Well, I know we didn't sell you the house, but maybe we can introduce you, and you guys could like fall in love and 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 live there together." And I was like, "That." Right now, I don't want to hear that right now. I don't, not a big setup guy to begin with, but like, why don't you just sell me the fucking house? Um, <laughs> you didn't give me my dream house, but you're trying to give me my dream wife. Yeah. Right? In the and house. I, I truly never thought uh, that would happen, that I would uh, try to buy a house, they'd not sell it to me, and then try to set me up with the person who they sold the house to. Uh, my real estate agent called me and was like, hey, I don't know if this sounds weird or or this is normal for you, but uh, just so you know. Yeah, you can come over. Go on dates with her. Be upset that it's not your house and it's hers. So That's house hunting is going great. I'm going to leave here and check out another another house. But uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll see. So thanks for all hopefully your positive. The next house is your house. Thanks for all your positive vibes out there. Um Speaking of positive vibes, uh, I think we have a, a fun and interesting uh, episode today. I have been fascinated by this whole kind of Karen culture, these Karen videos out there. I didn't even know what it meant. And I wanted to talk about it. And I thought uh, I wanted to find the right person to have a conversation with this about. And uh, I thought uh, Sarah Colonna would be perfect. I, it's the first time I met Sarah in person. I've, I'm a fan of her work. Uh, she is a very talented and successful comedian. Uh, she's friends with good friends with Fortune Feimster and Heather McDonald, who have both been on this podcast. Um, you might recognize her from Chelsea lately. Uh, she is on Insatiable on Netflix. She's on Shameless. She might play even play some Karen characters, if you will. <laughs> and so we just have a fun discussion about uh, Karen culture. Maybe times we've been at guilty of at risk of being Karens. What does it mean to be a Karen? And we're sorry, Karens. The, the, the <laughs> people actually named Karen. Um, so anyways, it's just uh, kind of a fun, uh, hopefully informative um, discussion about Karen culture. If you, maybe you aren't, maybe you don't even know what the fuck we're talking. I, I think everyone knows I right still now. can't believe you're just like hip to the Karen game now. It's been like three months. I didn't realize it was like a thing. I, I My yeah. guess is the people listening uh, I'm not alone in that. That in, in 2019, they 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 didn't know what it meant to say Karen, what, what what calling someone a Karen meant, and now it's my new favorite thing on on <laughs> to to watch the quote unquote Karens go down. It, it, we, like, for, instead of watching the news, I've taken up to like Karen social media. I just don't get why people have to be shitty to other humans. You know what what yeah. what is that? I don't know. Anyways, we discuss it with uh, Sarah Colonna, uh, very talented, again, comedian, author, actor. Uh, anything else, Chrissy, before we uh, get right to it? No. Uh, well, I like this episode. It's fun. Well, let's get to it. Don't forget to, don't forget to send your questions at asknickacastmedia.com for Ask Nick episodes. Uh, check us out, obviously, on Monday. 
uh, for uh, we solved the world's problems. And uh, I think that's about it. Without further ado, all things Karen with Sarah Colonna. We all hate liars and no one lies more than shampoo people. The shampoo industry are liars. They claim to do all these things for your hair and be focused on your needs. And they're just mass producing this shit. No, 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 no. Don't believe that crap. But Function of Beauty is putting out customized shampoo and hair conditioner specific to your needs because you tell them what your needs are. And then they formulate a shampoo based on that assessment. Duh. I mean, you know. I mean, I don't mean to brag, but I've become obsessed. Just so you know. Yeah. I mean, you I going, do have quite the, quite the long locks you got here. Quite the mane. So quite the mane. I have quite the mane. So I was so excited because I was able to get Function of Beauty. I went on the website and I put in a little bit about, do I have, do I have uh, dry hair? Uh, yeah. Do I have split ends? Yeah. Just put in what I got. And they, uh, they curate something just for me. You can even pick out the color. Like a magic so, like, I potion the color of my shampoo, shampoo, shampoo and the yeah. color of my shampoo. So instead yeah. of going to the, you know, the store and being like, I mean, I think, I guess, I mean. No. What's. This is better. Because you can pick it out all yourself, even the colors, and they even put your name on the bottle. So you want to put your bottles in your shower and you're living with somebody else. It's like, no, 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 that one's just for me. So it's really cool. Already I can tell a difference in my hair. It's already hydrated so more. I can tell my waves are a little bit different. It's not fried or like frizzy. So I'm obsessed with it. I love it so much. Well, Function of Beauty is the internet's top rated customized hair care brand with over 30,000 five-star customer reviews. And counting curly or straight, natural or processed function of beauty individually formulates every bottle based on your unique hair type, style preference, and hair goals. To get started right now, go to functionofbeauty.com slash V-I-A-L-L to take your four-part hair profile quiz and save 20% on your first order. Don't spend another minute in hair misery. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash V-I-A-L-L to let them know that we sent you. Function of beauty.com slash V I A L L. I'm getting whiter teeth. I tell you what, I, I haven't wiped my teeth in, in some time. I, I'm a, I'm a, oh wait, I drink way too much coffee. I've stained my teeth. I'm going to get the shiniest, most wonderful teeth. Uh, I can't wait. I just started using it. Super easy to use. Uh, I'm just like watching Netflix, whitening my teeth all at the same time. Uh, what makes this product so unique and better than all the other teeth whiteners that you see out there is the patented purple light, which is safer, faster, and better at breaking up dental stains than outdated blue light systems. It's also safer on enamel than any other system and unlike other teeth whitening products on the market has zero sensitivity. Because you know what? I've done that before. I've tried to whiten my teeth and the next thing you know, you drink some water, you're like, ah, that hurts. And it hurts. So... And tell a white, and I mean, I'm, again, I just started using it. My teeth feel just as normal and just as non-sensitive as before I started it. It was so easy to use. Uh, they give you this special paste. I brush my teeth. Everyone, you know, you're supposed to brush your teeth anyways, so I do that. And then I put the mouthpiece in. I started, like, watching TV and doing laundry, and bam, I am looking better already. Intello White just launched the biggest breakthrough in at-home teeth whitening in 20 years, the Indigo Teeth Whitening Light System. So check it out right now. Our listeners get $50 off their new Indigo Teeth Whitening System, but you have to go to tryindigo.com and use the promo code SHO. That's T-R-Y-I-N-D-I-G-L-O-W.com and use promo code SHOW, S-H-O-W. Sarah, how's it going? It's good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. I Th was very th excited. Thanks too. for being my first guest back in the studio um, post-quarantine. Yeah. Well, it's kind of nice to actually be in person doing it, something. I, I quite enjoyed my 45-minute commute here just because <laughs> it was like something You were going to do. somewhere? I was going somewhere. I know. I had to put on jeans today. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I'm really going to a place. I... I Last night I went to bed looking forward to like driving somewhere and having something to do. It's true. To leave my house. And you guys did it very, it's like, it's all safe, all masks until you sit yep. down and mm -hmm. we're far apart. We're and, you know, sanitize the shit out of everything. Um, For COVID, not just because of me, right? 
<laughs> right. well, it's about 50. <laughs> More for me. Um, I still, I've realized I, I do bite my nails. Um, I don't know why. Nervous habit? I've my whole life, but I am, uh, if you can see. Oh, they're growing because you don't want to put your hands Not in only that, mouth. but they're like, they're like, they. you would never know. You, you have never nice t- hands. I, right? Yeah. I've, I've gotten really good at that. But I, you I don't re- have any overgrown cuticle looking I, situation. I don't know. Maybe. But I've, I've realized since corona that is a i know he's new as a disgusting habit i've really <laughs> now people just tell you if now they see your hand in your really, mouth <laughs> i mean not like shaking hands is well the other day i was uh, i went up with my friend at the beach and his girlfriend i'm like you know what i'll get out let's go to the beach it's the three of us we'll you know keep our distance we live in venice and then all his friends showed up and i was about to leave and everyone's just like wanted to introduce themselves and shake their hand and i'm just like I'm never going to talk to you people again. And I don't want to be a dick, but I was like, why are we, why are we shaking hands? Yeah. Didn't you guys get the memo? I was a little, shaking hands? it was a little, it made me a little uncomfortable where like, there's definitely a fuck it mentality. There is. And I, I mean, path. it's, it's hard because like, I, I've never met you before. I'm a fan of yours. I didn't tell you that before when you messaged oh, me, but I got very course. excited. Um, and I, so I'm like, oh, I don't, what do we, you know, we did a fist bump because that's what you do now. You have to be respectful of the other person's space like you can't just go in someone tried to go in for a hug for me recently and i was like what planet are you on (laughs) (laughs) i know you can't do that i I, it felt weird like i first first time i met well 10 minutes first time i met you 10 minutes ago when we met in person (laughs) and i threw out the fist bump i I gotta be honest i've never done that to introduce myself to a woman to throw it just a it's the it's the you know fist bump it's the way and then i immediately sanitized my hands <laughs> after i was just like oh my god i don't know oh I don't my know god where she's been it. yeah um Fair. well i thought you would be great to have this conversation i've really been fascinated by the karen culture if you will yes i didn't even know it existed a month ago uh i didn't know what it was and i gotta say right now my favorite guilty pleasure is watching quote unquote Karens go down on the internet. I mean, I will. I'm with you. <laughs> I'll spend a good hour and a half every morning just watching these videos. And and then I'll read the comments on Twitter as like Twitter tries to identify who they are. And it's like. It's I, fast. It's real fast. People find people very quickly. Um, And it's just, it's just a kind of a fascinating discussion because I think there's a lot of angles to this discussion. As a straight white male, I'm like, do I even have this discussion? Is it how we're we're living in a time where we're trying to break down uh, stereotypes and uh, uh, lumping groups of people into a category, and yet here you have this kind of uh, term Karen to identify a more of a less of a behavior I look at it yeah. rather than a, a type of person. Oh, definitely. It's a right? behavior. Yeah. I Because I feel, I really do feel bad for the people named Karen that are not Karen. That's the first question, right? right? So <laughs> like, for all, just, you know, all the Karens listening right now, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Totally. Yeah. I'm probably not the first person to talk about it. I do feel like, listen, uh, no one gets my last name right. Uh, Vial. Yeah. Right. I, I, I didn't problem. realize my last name was a thing until I had my first girlfriend and then she made me aware of the fact that it was less than appealing. And I was just like, Oh, vile. Uh, Oh, I didn't even ever, I never put that together. Neither did I. Yeah. And then I became really self-conscious about, and then I go on TV and I was the villain at first. So then people had fun with that. Be like, of course, the vile villain. And, and I was like, well, it's not vile, it's vile, you know? And it was just, I got very self-conscious about my name. Right. So I get oh, that. Imagine being a Karen right I now. I get that. I know. And there's some, I know some really wonderful Karens and I'm like, sorry about your name being abused, <laughs> but it's just the perfect name for some reason. It just became the I was right way to describe someone. Reading up on it last night and it's, Apparently, it was like a top 10 name for about a decade in the late 60s, the early 70s. Okay. It has fallen off the cliff um, for a lot of reasons. Right. You know, definitely not going to happen. There's not going to be any after this. Never after this. Canceled name. Yeah. I mean, it could, like, the way it's going now, like, it could be right up there with Adolf. Right. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, who right now in the year 2020? Having a baby girl, throwing out names, goes, I know, 
Karen. And yeah. no one in their family is like, hey, just a heads up. That's not going to be it. Go with a Kate. Anything else with a K? Yeah. You know, there's plenty Especially of if like, their names. last name starts with a K and they want to do this kind of, what's it called? The double, I don't know. Uh, yeah. You, what is that called? I don't know what it's called. What is it called, Chrissy? Do you know? Anyways, you know, like I know what you mean. <laughs> Victor Vial. Yes. You know, like that would have been that just sounds like a creepy guy. It, it kind of does. Um anyways, I, I'm just it's, I'm fascinated by it. And um do you know how long has this been around? Do you know? Well, I do feel like it's been like I'm like you, it's I guess it's been around for a bit, but I think over the past few months, it seems like 2020 is when Karen's really, really picked took up. off. Um, you know, and like I said, it sucks to be a, a, a nice person named Karen. And it just does, it just fits though. It, you know, but then they, I see it a lot with the, um, they compare it to like the Kate Goslin, like they use her face. As, Which I saw that. Yeah. Hot. Did she do something do, about I, her cut that I, made her a Karen? Well, that know. was my question when I saw that was, did she do something on the show or did she do something in life after the show where she demonstrated that behavior yeah i don't know or is I, it just because she got kind of a very unattractive haircut i think it was just about the haircut and they decided that's oh, like well, a that sucks i think but i could be wrong i mean maybe there was something she did that's very uh karen-esque so for those of you who don't know the definition of a karen and kind of the urban dictionary if you will is it kind of started with a meme karen is a middle-aged white woman with an asymmetrical bob <laughs> So specific to the haircut, I don't know if, I, I feel like it's more broader than having a haircut. Asking to speak, you know, someone who like will ask to speak for a manager, uh, a sense of entitlement, uh, generally ignorant. Uh, lately, it seems to be people who uh, demonstrate behaviors of racism. Yeah. Uh, stereotyping groups of people. They don't the, like the to seem to wear Central mat. Park Karen, right? The Central Park Karen, right? Uh, the, Whose the, name was Amy. <laughs> Amy. Yeah. So lately, it's it seems to be definitely more uh, uh, on. It seems to be has has politicized, and I always kind of, I'm I'm cautious about doing this on the show with any group because I gotta say, thinking about what Karen means, the behavior, I'm pretty sure I know some Karens, quote unquote, right. who would identify as liberal. Yes. Right? Like, yeah. I, I, yeah, I definitely think it's more, I mean, lately we've just seen the examples, like you said, but there, I definitely think it's more like, you know, uh, the person who had to wait two minutes too long for her food, sort of that's where it came from, right? Like, I think anyway, sort of the people that just, like, like it says, want to speak to the manager right away. Do you have a favorite Karen video out there recently? I, I mean, Amy Cooper, the I, dog, the birder was... <sighs> That was hard to be my favorite just because it truly was sad. No, it was sad. And you, and like what could have happened to, to somebody by calling the police on, you know. And, yeah, well, and, we've seen and, this with a and what Taylor. She, yeah. And the way she said, actually, like, I'm going to say that there's an African American man to talk. So that it was, it's hard to call that a favorite. It's more just like, that was just, yeah, that was eye opening. Yeah. And, uh, um, what is going on? And I, this past month, that's what I, some, for better, not for, well, for worse, and I guess for better in the sense that we are becoming more aware, it's just, you're just seeing it more. Like Will Smith had a, a tweet out there, like racism isn't like coming out of the woods. You're just being recorded. There's He's, a lot more videos It's just now. videos. And yeah. now you're seeing that we have taken this for granted that it's not happening. And people just, um, they keep just talking right into the camp. They know they're being filmed. Yeah, what is like that? The woman that, we, uh, the, the, one's that the skincare company, um, and she was going off on the guy for putting in chalk on his own home. Oh, yes. Black Lives Matter. And she was like doing this little thing yeah. with her mouth and yeah. looking down. It was real creepy. And she she knew she was being recorded and she just kept going. And she was saying, I know who lives there, but he actually did he, live there. He lived there. So I was just like, why? Once that, I think there's something about the quote unquote Karen that once the, the film starts rolling, they just get more defiant. And you're like, don't you know this? how this is going to end? Haven't you seen social media and what happens? Well, that's an interesting question. It's really blown up in the past few weeks. Yeah. Right? But yet, they, there's an Instagram account I'm calling like Karen's Gone Wild. Yes, which is very enjoyable, a by new the favorite way. follow. I do, in, influence, it's right after Influencers Gone Wild, which I I don't know if you follow that one. I haven't followed it, but I've, I've heard of it's it. It's quite enjoyable. It's just, you know, 
someone trying to take a photo in the ocean and getting knocked out by a wave or, you know, <laughs> they end up fine. So it's, it's so, <laughs> but it's wonderful. Um, but I will say my favorite one recently, um, as far as, although I feel a little bad for this woman because I think she was just having a bad day, but I don't know if you guys saw officer Karen or the woman, um, I did see had that. A, it was it was confusing the egg McMuffin, the egg McMuffin. and it was confusing because I kept waiting for something to have happened that upset her, and really it was just that she had to wait. She had to wait, and she, when they brought the coffee, she was like, "Oh, I guess you must be poisoning my." F I don't know. I don't mean to brag, but I worked at a fast food place. For my first job was at McDonald's. Thank you. Yeah. I worked at Hardee's. We're rivals. Hardee's, yeah. Which I didn't realize was Carl's Jr. Now. It I just thought Hardy's went be, away. Nick. Okay, yeah. it used to be its own thing, yeah. and um, but apparently it didn't do great. And then Carl's Jr. had to buy it out. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but yeah, you you know from working in a fast food restaurant, sometimes you do have to ask people to pull forward and wait for their food, and it does not mean you're putting razor blades in their egg McMuffins. Sure, and I you're right. That one was. Um, I've I've met I have a brother who's a who's a cop. Yes, and um. Yeah, uh, I, I'm all for the reform. Things need to be corrected. There's not a doubt in my mind, but I empathize with the stress, the stress, yes, and certainly the many great uh, uh, police men and women out there. Yes, and I understand that the, the stress. No, I do too, and that, that's why I was yeah. like, okay, I'm thinking now. I was like, oh, feel just feel bad for her, like but she's under she so make, much stress. But don't make the video. The Karen <laughs> aspect of it is the lack of self awareness that. The, the making the Don't video. Don't post it. Yeah. Like, this whole five minute epic like lead up. This like, and you're watching it. Well, like, whoa, what I was like, somebody did something awful to this officer. I'm going to feel bad for her. And yeah. then it turned out she just, uh, she just, they to told wait. a pull. I've, you know how many times I've had to pull forward and wait? Yeah. And then have them screw it up. Yeah. Like five different times before they've gotten it right. And then do you complain though when they screw up your fast food order or do you just eat it? Cause it's almost like a happy accident. Cause you got someone else's taco or whatever. Well, here's what I do, and because we talked about like a, a, a big barometer for identifying a Karen, men or women, because right. you know men can be Karens, the I Chads. Know. Okay, Chad, you go with Chad. I was thinking Todd, but Todd, Chad, Chad. I think Chad. Yeah, Chad is. You're right. Have you ever met a Chad that? Well, I actually have met some good Chads, but I've met a lot of bad. Ch it's like fifty fifty. <laughs> Why? I don't know the phenomenon of like there. I've known a lot of shitty Chads. I don't know Wait, why. There was there. Yeah, there's this. Yes. 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 Well, even in Bachelor Nation, <laughs> yeah. one of the worst kind of humans in the from the show. He was Chad. a Chad. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's where it came from. People yeah. Being a Chad. I. Uh, I. I know some good Chad. I though. loathe mayonnaise. Loathe. Okay. Can't stand it. Okay. And so I just I can't I can't eat it. I just won't. I will hmm. like have a gag reflex. So if someone were to something's wrong with you. It, plot, that's just one of many. Um, <laughs> if I were to say, I, I used to always order Big Macs. I can't eat McDonald's now just because I had a bad experience and I just can't do it anymore. But I used to always get Big Macs without the special sauce. Right. And if they would put it on, I'm always like, because I have this annoyance with mayonnaise and they, people put mayonnaise on everything and then they put it on and the weights, I'm always just like, hey, listen, I know I'm the pain in the ass here. I want to apologize in advance. But is there any chance like I can get, like I'm really... I mean, cautious. you asked for it that way, so and it's I'm fair always like, I'm a like, hey, I know I'm annoying. I'm an, I'm one of those like annoying people who ask it for on the side. I get it. And I want, I am so sorry, but can you please? You're like the opposite of a Chad. You're just like, I'm so sorry that I'm asking you to fix something that I asked for. <laughs> yes, in the first Yes, because place. it's just but like I do that too. From it's from I, working in restaurants. That probably. and I also don't want them to spit on my food, and right. I'm not trying to give them a reason to. And also. If you work in the service industry, just because you asked and I wrote it down and I put the order in correctly doesn't mean the kitchen got it right. Right. You know? I, I would always blame the kitchen, even if I was yeah, the no, one that you put always, it in. Yeah. You always blame the kitchen. She's like, oh, yeah, like, sorry. Oh, gosh, Ugh. those guys again. And I'm like, oh, crazy. Sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> no. I would totally do that. But um, I'm always, I'm yeah, I, I'm more facet about the behavior of of the Karen, and I'm I'm wondering if it's going to change. And where does a sense of entitlement come from? Well, I, we had Tyler Merritt on a podcast uh, the other week, and we've talked a lot about privilege, right? Obviously, yeah. with these times, and even myself, I think there's a really, in a positive way, been a kind of a reflection period for a lot of white people of like, man, even though I complain a lot, and I complain, I have my like stress days where I'm like, oh fuck, this sucks, man. I'm just having to. It's just like, wow. 
I've never had to deal with that. You know, Tyler coming on and telling the story about like having to worry about making himself look smaller around old white women so he doesn't scare the shit out of them. Right. And I'm just like, I've never thought of that. And wow, what a terrible stress to have to deal with day in and day out. And yet we still find our ability to make a big deal about small things. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely guilty of having sent like an email, you know, <laughs> like, in a, you know, usually it's on like, usually I'm, I'm trying to think of what I've ever sent one about. I feel like it's usually has something to do with flying, you know, but I try to do it nicely because like, whatever, but I'll, you know, complain about something. Like, I've done that before. I've, oh. I know that I've done it. Like, I can't think of a specific time, but I know that I'm guilty of it. It's of being- We've all- And now I'll never want to do it we, again. We've all <laughs> of us been Karens at some point. Yeah. No one is Karen free. Right. Right. That's true. Of, of having a moment where you're pissed and you feel wronged. And when you look back and go, I probably made a bigger deal about that than I should have. Yeah. I'll tell you what, my armpits are fresh. I'm feeling good about the uh, things I'm putting on my skin because I I'm allergic to n normal deodorants. Uh, and I've been using antiperspirant most of my life knowing that there's so many toxins in that. And I've been using each and every... I, I have it on right now. I smell fresh. I smell clean. I'm putting wonderful, safe products on my skin and I don't stink because a lot of people let's be honest they try these um all natural deodorants and they still smell not I've been doing a lot of stuff outside and like the heat and the humid and it like keeps me dry the entire time it's this peace of mind I mean seriously like I it was a big thing for me uh the deodorant you put on your body it's um it's a big deal to have something that's very safe and very natural and, and doesn't have the normal toxins and aluminums that uh you you see parabens that you see and, and most deodorants out there. It just has six simple ingredients plus essential oils. Each and every ha uses natural ingredients like coconut oil and dead sea salt that work together to reduce body odor. Each and every goes on silky smooth and keeps you odor free all day. Plus it's vegan and cruelty free. So visit eachandevery.com slash V-I-A-L-L to get your amazing deodorant. Each and every dot com slash v-i-a-l-l -L, and use promo code v-i-a-l-l -L for 30 percent off your first purchase that's not eligible to combine with other discounts or subscriptions just a heads up that's promo code v-i-a-l-l -L at each and every dot com slash v-i-a-l-l -L. try risk-free for 30 days or your money back guaranteed i think especially at the sort of um before twitter turned into whatever it is now um i feel like there was a lot of anyone who had a decent following would complain about something to try to get the company to I, respond okay. to them, right? I've tweeted about my airline experience before. Does that make me a to. Karen? No, I mean, I've done it too. I don't know if it makes us Karen so much as maybe just um, people who took a moment to complain. Like you said, like you're just in a, and you're taking a second and you're complaining and then you're like, did I really need to complain about that? I'm thinking out loud here, but my justification have, has been, there's nothing that ma makes me more mad is when someone tells me they can't help me when I know they just don't want to. Yeah. And like the airline industry seems notorious for like apologizing for things they have the power to fix, but they're just like, nah, it's a numbers game. Right. Yeah. Fuck that's you. True. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you still flew yeah. and you'll fly You're going to have to fly. What are you going to do? Walk? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's very true. And all the airlines are like, let's just agree to be equally terrible. Right. And therefore, you know, there's no airline that doesn't have a terrible airline experience. Absolutely. From their customers. And there are times when you're like, am I complaining about something that was worth it, you know, when I've taken to Twitter to do, because I've definitely done that too. I'm like, was it worth it for me to complain about that? But if it's something outrageous, obviously, um, there's a different space for that. But sometimes I've definitely felt like, oh man, maybe I was just being a brat. Yeah, I was I, probably I, just being a brat. I have not yet. I've never tweeted about an airline without people suggesting that I'm a bit entitled. That's, <laughs> and I'm like, eh, fair. Yeah. Your character on Insatiable could be a Karen. I think she could be a Karen. Yeah, uh, a drunk Karen. <laughs> have you had any Karen moments on on the show? I mean, I've seen it, but I don't know. I haven't seen all of your parts. Um, I would say, I'm trying to think. Not really. Um, yeah, I, I'm sure. I feel like she would definitely. She also, though, like works at a fast food place and is basically, um, if someone tried to be a Karen to her, she would just 
Karen ruin that person. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She would just Karen them back. She wouldn't listen. And they're like, your character on Shameless would probably be the same way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She, I feel like uh, this character I play on Shameless, um, again, in a fast food restaurant, I feel very stereotyped right now. I'm realizing I just only work in fast food places on shows. Well, you've been really been pigeonholed. I mean, yeah. <laughs> You're Talk about a typecast. You're the manager. <laughs> um, and I play the manager. So if someone wanted to speak <laughs> to her, uh, I feel like she would just basically be like you can leave you know um which i think me personally if i was a manager that's it wouldn't be great for anybody because i would probably lose my job quickly because if someone complained to me i'd just be like okay (laughs) that's it like i don't think i'd help resolve the situation i don't think i'd be friendly about it i just think i'd be kind of like all right sorry you didn't like it what do you want us to do well if i were i'd just be like what do you what do you want to make i i don't care enough to not try to solve your problem because I don't want to fight with you. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like, okay. Um, you know, the, the, I think the, the biggest place where you find the most amount of Karens is Facebook. Yes. Um, even my, uh, group of friends back home, there are lots of, of Karens, Mm -hmm. not in Karens. And I like in the mom town Facebook, I don't think they would like, (laughs) you know, again, when I say Karens, certainly that I don't know of any, any of them to be racist or would, you know, knowingly call the cops on a a person of color. You're talking about the like, but like complain about a small thing. Yeah. They go on. It's always like those cryptic long messages. And it's just like, I just want to say something. (laughs) And for all the real people, it's finally, it's good to know who my real friends are. And, and it's just like, what the fuck are you talking? About? And you uh, know they're talking about like one person. And they, they want that person to see it oh, on yeah. Facebook. On Facebook, yes. And that, you know, and they want that person to be like, oh my God, who is she talking about? And then she, and she just want, and you, they just want someone, and then they want everyone to go, comment and say like, I, you're amazing. You're I amazing. love you. You're amazing. I love you. And it's just like, why do you got to put that out there? There should be a Karen book. Like instead of Facebook, there should just be. Karen, they, yeah, Karen, Karen book. book. Like they should all have to go. They should be banned from Facebook and they should all have to just go and complain to each other. If I'm trying to understand or just like empathize with the Karen in terms of like, all right, why did you have this moment? Like, yeah, I want, I mean, sometimes I, it, in some cases, I'm like, does it come out of boredom? You know what I mean? Like, you just don't have anything else 100%. going on. Did you see that one video with the girl uh, getting coffee? who was called out for not wearing a mask. And then started coughing on people? Yes. Yeah. That was my favorite. That's my winner. For, yeah. Because one, uh, she didn't realize she was getting videotaped. Yeah. And you saw the look on her face when she looked at the camera. And then also, like I, that's the one where I really looked at and I thought to myself, here's this younger, seemingly younger person. Yeah. Because it's never okay to be ignorant or racist. But like when you see like a, a Karen video of this much older woman, you're just like, well, maybe she just doesn't know better. Right. You know, like she's maybe just not she gonna just change. Grew, she's just yeah. not, you know, like 60 years of being around a tight community and there's just ignorance all over the place. But uh, a woman who's in her early 20s living in, say, New York, who yeah. you would think a lot of per- progress is around her, and then she does that. But what caused her to feel such rage and pride? Because someone's like, hey, do you mind wearing a mask? Yeah, and it's, I mean, and it, it's just being polite. It's just taking care. It's not that big of a deal. You put it on, you can take it off the minute you get out of the store and you're not around anybody. But the, I, I would say you're right about that being the favorite. I had kind of forgotten about it because even with like the officer one we talked about earlier, there's a way you can go, okay, she's under a lot of stress. She just had a breakdown. Yeah. You Poor know. lapse in judgment. Certainly yeah. like not self-aware. Right. But you you understood maybe there's, where it was coming from. There's some from. sort of sympathy with like she's – there's a lot going on. Yeah. Um, but with this – that lady, there's no, there's no sympathy because what – why – why would you go start coughing at people in their faces during the in like the middle of a pandemic? Yeah, I don't get that. Uh, when 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 the pandemic first came out, and I understand, no, I don't like to be called out. Everyone has pride. I was, I live in Venice. It was mut. It was early. It was like a, it was a it was a time where it was like, hey, masks don't help you. Do they do help you? I was confused. What's the protocol here? Well, what at do, the beginning, it was confusing. Yeah. They didn't tell They're us. Like, yeah. You know, like, ah, well, it doesn't no, really help. But, you know, just wear it anyways. So early on, I, I didn't have a mask on. I'm at Whole Foods and some lady calls me out. And I'll be honest, it irritated me. Yeah. I just walked away. Yeah, you didn't I go just, cough in her face? I didn't say anything to her. <laughs> I was just like, hey, cool, you know, yeah. fine. But what, 
And don't get me wrong, it it annoyed me that she did that. Yeah. Um, but there's a way to a, walk away from something and then think about it. Just minding your own business, right? Like the lady in Central Park, like just minding your own business. It seems to be a lot of people's problems. Like, okay, when you're when you when we're in the middle of this stuff and you need to say to someone, "Hey, would you please just put a mask on at a store?" That's that's fine. Like that's being safe. Mm-hmm. But I saw at the very beginning of this, I was at the grocery store and we had there nothing had been locked down yet, but they were sort of, you know, it was coming. Like we all knew it was coming here in Los Angeles and and um this woman was buying a lot of cleaning products, but not nothing with Lysol. She was buying like Pledge okay. and Windex and saw some signs of hoarding. She yeah, so this other woman in the aisle sees her doing that and and says, you know, and it wasn't even, it was like maybe three bottles of pledge and a couple, you know. And so this woman in the aisle gets in her face and she's like, you are hoarding. They're telling us not to hoard. And she goes, um, no, I, I'm not. It's it's fine. And she's like, you're hoarding. they telling us not to hoard. Can't you see the sign? It says two, you know, sanitizers per, per household. And she's like, this is pledge. I'm not hoarding. And she was trying to like just get away from her and the woman wouldn't let it go. And finally, the woman looked at her and she goes, I'm a housekeeper. I, this is what I buy. I'm a housekeeper. This is my job. I have to. Yeah. And, I, and I started laughing because I was like, if you just would have minded your own business or the minute she said, you know. And so I started laughing and the mean woman looked at me because I was laughing and then I just ran. Um, I don't like to get involved. I just run like a wimp. I laugh in their faces and then I just run so they don't say anything mean like to me. me. Under, under your breath. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, there are definitely some busy body people. It's yeah. just like, why did you need to do that? But on the flip side, actually, Amy Cooper, it was, she got called out. Right. Same with the, the coffee shop gal. Um, no, you're right. Yeah. It's, it's this idea that how dare you correct me. Right. I am certain Amy Cooper has not minded her own business though in oh. life. Oh no, totally. Right. You keep you watch that video and go, she is definitely nitpicked right. people. But like getting called out for not having your dog on a leash, wasn't that what it was? Yeah. yeah. And, and is, in is, fact, she was wrong. Or and that's with the right. mask. And that's like, something where you just have to go, Oh, you're right. I am supposed to have my dog on a leash. Put it on. You know, sorry about that. Move on. And you know. Um, so you're right. It is sometimes the being in someone's business is that you're trying to correct them from doing something that could harm someone else or they're breaking, you know, flat out rules. Um, but when it's sometimes it's just like the busybody on the other sense, like that can be that Karen thing. Like you don't need to look at what's in my grocery cart. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> like we're fine. I got pledged. That's not going <laughs> to, it's not going to hurt you. I'm, I'm trying. How, how can we prevent Karen's from being Karen's going forward? Um. Well, it doesn't seem like, <laughs> posting them on social media is stopping anybody. Yeah. It seems to be just sort of this blind rage of like, indif- you know, just like I can just say what I want. Oh, you're going to record me? Fine. Put it up there. Um, but then they lose, you know, some of them lose their jobs, um, especially when it's obviously in a, a, a racist situation, yeah. as they should. Um, so I don't know how to stop them, though. I don't know. Well, that, well, that's the thing, too. It's because, like, we're kind of bouncing back and forth between the behavior of saying, well, we've all had our, our moment. Our, I've had my Chad moment. You've had your Karen moment. Right. And then there's the people who are truly, you know, I don't have a problem saying, like, Amy, despicable human yeah. being in terms of, like, I, you, you watch these videos and you think, why is it so, like, hard for you to be a good like is it that hard to be like a decent human being like what happened to you that caused you to be this way um to use your to say like literally use your whiteness to say i'm gonna call the cops and say yeah there's that and that's and and, and as far as that there's like i don't know if and uh, if what we can do right uh there's certain people you know you've seen uh you know we're in these extraordinary times and i do think sometimes it can be scary and there's uh, been some unfortunate situations, but overall, I do think that there's a lot of good that's come from this recently, and that's what I mean. Like the Black Lives Matter is becoming a, a, a mainstream thing. You know, like the average, even my quote unquote conservative friends are like, "Oh yeah, it just means Black Lives Matter. Cool, no problem." I know. Like it's not a terrorist organization I know. type of thing. That's a positive thing. It is right? positive, and it's taken a while to get there. But I'll say same as you. Like I grew up in Arkansas, so mm-hmm. I have a very a lot of conservative friends and family. And one of the 
I mean, I, I like one of the greatest things I've seen was someone I know well who didn't understand it before. Yeah. You know, not that I hate the circumstances that made it happen that where she had to understand it, but she it clicked with her, and yeah. I was just like, okay, if people are, you know, this is at least it's something. At least it's changed. Definitely, least, it's yeah. even meant a lot on this podcast, where or even on my social, where you. Certainly, you put stuff out there and you're going to get a lot of noise of trolls trying to just write things to even deliberately make you mad. But there's been a couple people who said, you know what? It's stuck this time. I get what you're saying now. Yeah. I understand it. And it's just like, yeah, it sucks that it's taken this long. But a lot of, a lot of times it's just come like, listen, when I first time I heard uh, Black Lives Matter just echoed. I think, you know, I think I've said this before, like someone said it was like kind of this radical organization and it was like, oh, I didn't realize that. And then you just, we we believe things that we just kind of hear out in the open. And if you are surrounded by people who have a narrow, you know, frame of mind, yeah. that's how like these things get passed along. They do. And that's like you, it's, um, I think hopefully people are learning you really have to D like dig deeper you have to find out for yourself what it means like anything because you, you can't just take it for face value because someone said well that's what this is because then you go well that's not how i understood it and then all of a sudden you're learning on your own and i think sometimes people get and maybe even from a, the karen standpoint change is scary i think people they see change happening uh, happening and it's it it uh, is a scary feeling for people in terms of what they're seeing out there and this the realization that you could have been wrong for so long. Right. Right? Yeah. And like your subconscious of being like, wow, I think, you know, let, let's say someone heard Black Lives Matter as a reference point, and then you actually got in a debate with someone and you said to them, well, I don't think you should, I think all lives matter or something. And you fought with your friend. Right. And then five years later, you're like, wait, I don't, I get it now, but you don't want to admit it out loud because you realize that you have, said these things and yeah i think that i think that people's psychology it's just like people sometimes are so resistant to change because what does it say about you as a person um it's it, it is hard for people to admit they're wrong but like the uh, one way to fix that for people would be to go like oh it's actually it's it's great to grow <laughs> and yes. to admit you're wrong like i've been wrong so many times and totally. i can i have no well, uh, you know ego about and, saying it and that's why i try to on my like on this it's just like I keep saying, I have not always thought this way. I have been wrong. I have um, just through a product of my environment said things that like I realize that we're not okay to say, right? Or, or, or we're ignorant in nature, right? You know. And I think that's as long as you keep growing, it's it's a it's a, it's a positive thing. But and for I mean, maybe for Karen's one first step they could take is like I've I've even done it for myself. Like if you're about to fire off that email. That maybe isn't worth like your laptop gets broken. You fire off an email, talk to someone, you know. Um, but something over, you know, a, a, a food thing or a, you know, just something. Maybe you just go either way today. Does it really matter so much the next day? And if it really still matters to you that much, I guess go ahead. But if you're about uh, to scream <laughs> and say, or, or like if the words out of your mouth are about to go, how dare you? Chances are you're at risk of being a Karen. That's true. That's it. <laughs> You should start like a whole, you might be a Karen if. if. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because really, if you say, how dare you? I mean, yeah. How, like, what, what is anything that happens to you? You could not like, how dare you? Yeah. I, that's a, it's very, um, it's, very it's like entitled. such a soap opera. How dare you? Yeah. It's, but yet people say that a lot. They do. And it just seems like something that should be held for like movie scripts. I mean, like, and, yeah, I, I said that to you. Yeah. How dare you? I'm so offended. <laughs> I mean, if you're white and straight and you say the words, I'm offended. Yeah, buddy. It's a chance. <laughs> Especially if you're a guy. I mean. Yeah. I, I don't know if what I, I've said, like, what I could, what could I possibly be offended about? I'm trying to think if any have ever said, how dare you to anyone? I how feel like you. I can't have, because it doesn't even sound like Listen, words that would guys can up. say things to women that are offensive. Don't get me wrong. So they. Yeah, they, but. Yeah, but, I guess I would use different words when I when someone says something like that to me. Uh, you're a pig. Like or, f off. Fuck yeah. Out, fuck yeah. you. <laughs> I'm offended. Um, but like, yeah, I think is when we feel offended, it, there's a good chance that we should just our pride takes over again. I remember that grocery store when the lady called me out for not having a mask on. Yeah, and I didn't like it. No, no. I'm wrong. 
but just but you walked away you, you you breathe and i think we just have those moments because you're right it, it's really can be embarrassing when you realize I I overreacted. Yeah. I mean, we've all had our definite moments of overreacting and there it doesn't feel good. You know, even if it's just in like a private situation, like with your relationship or something, and you're just like, oh, sorry, I, you know, I mean, I'm like, sorry, I threw the printer last night because it wouldn't work. Like, but at least you do it in the privacy of your own home and then feel shame about it. Have you read Not a that I've ever done that, guys. Uh and there is also some truth too. And I mean, kind of going back to the like being like the Amy Cooper being called up for something she was doing wrong. When I've had, when I've gotten the most offensive, it's when I'm being, again, like even by friends, other things, I remember times where it was like, they're, they're definitely not totally wrong. Right. You are like, you can't prove it and I'm going to fight this. But like, I mean, I've had fights with friends about like, I mean, stupid, like video games about like, we used to have this Madden draft and we, and, and I got accused of, trying to convince another player to take a different player because I wanted this player and I got accused for it. I just fucking went off on him. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just, how fucking dare you accuse me? What, what the fuck? And I'm like, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking like, I mean, yeah, I kind of a little. <laughs> yeah, but you went full Chad. I just went just, full Chad out. Yeah, but that's like, it, over makes video you, games. it makes you feel better. And it, like, like my, one of my best friends, you know. <laughs> But that can be forgiven, you know? Yeah. And, and I didn't say anything like I didn't accuse him or, or well, I keep, definitely accuse him of, of you yeah. know, being wrong. And but you're I, like, I was totally I didn't make doing threats that. or whatever, but thank God it wasn't videotaped. But it is funny how when you're wrong, how, you know, with a, with somebody close, especially, that you can just be like, I'm not backing down. I'm no. just going to say, you are attacking me and you are so mean. Yeah. You are <laughs> so mean. How dare you? You gaslight the shit out of them. <laughs> it's like, and the whole time you're like, they are so right. Yeah. Like I'm so You're like, I can't wait for this to be over yeah. so I don't have to quit acting like I'm mad even yeah. though he's totally Halfway right. Halfway through the argument, you're like, oh, fuck, am I? <laughs> like, uh, uh, but yeah, we. I think it's just the, don't just take a moment. I think the take a moment is the probably the biggest part. And that can probably apply to so many people on it just in different ways in your life. Like, you know before you fight with a loved one or a friend or before you get defensive about your Madden thing, uh, you know, that you can just take a moment and be like, okay, all right, is this worth it? You know, yeah. and I mean, then almost, maybe you won't end up all over Twitter with, you know. I've, uh, listen, and recently even like I've, uh, especially with these times, I have responded to people that I've been like, you know, I don't, I don't know if you follow people in Bachelor Nation, but. Uh, oh, I do. You know, Garrett, you know, his recent Blue Lives Matter post. Yeah. And so uh, I responded, you know, politely, but you could tell I was like critical, but like I wasn't going off. It was more like, well, are you, what are you saying this? Are you saying that? Right. But I definitely believe that when it comes to fighting with the internet, it, there's a zero, like, it, it it never works out the it, way there's you want. A, there's a no Zero. win no there's a no win situation no. and so like yeah the the current like if you're going to put out your frustration on the internet yeah that's a you just have to know that you're not going to end um you're not changing anyone's you're, mind you're not changing anyone's mind you're not going to feel good so for me i'm trying to focus on like the things like i said where someone i know back home has finally realized certain things that she you know was defensive about before and, um, you know, and the people that are finally understanding, like, hey, you know, I think I saw it best when I saw someone say, like, the Black Lives Matter. Like, when you say that, um, when um, Boston, you know, the awful bombing happened in Boston and it was Boston strong, mm -hmm. nobody went, well, what about Philadelphia strong? Yeah. Like, it's just. That was just, a great analogy. Yeah. yeah and it's like, analogy. okay, you or, know. Or people, when people are like, fuck cancer. You're like, <laughs> well, what about HIV? Yeah. It's like, no, you can, you can just. Just, you go help the one thing that needs yeah, the help fine. right now and the focus and well, the, that's the thing. That. People, it's it, they're you're resistant to it. That's yeah. the, that, and that's literally a great example of you know what they're saying and you just for whatever reason want to fight it. Yeah. For what reason? Let's talk about the reason that makes you uncomfortable with this saying. Okay. Yeah. I get it. And in strangers, you're not you're not going to win with. So like, it's almost like take the take the points with the people that you know, and you can actually try to have like a good conversation with. And because um, fighting on the internet, even though I still do it sometimes, yeah, we're all human. Uh, yeah, I mean it does it, but it never makes you feel good, and it just makes you more mad. 
you know, and, and angry at the world. And then you're like, well, now I'm in a, now I'm upset. <laughs> like now I'm in a sh- shitty place all day because I fought yeah. with somebody named, you know, with like no profile photo and like. And, and again, a great thing to combat Karenness or Chadness is, is, is silly as it sounds, not silly, it are just like acts of random acts of kindness too. Yeah. Think about like the Karen videos of the woman, like standing in a parking spot to save it. And, and like just, sitting on people's cars because they're trying to save them. Or, you know, next time, let someone, you know, you got to that parking spot first and you see someone and you're at a standoff and you're just trying to fight for that spot. Let them in. Instead of being a Karen, just be like, no problem. Yeah. This might take me five more minutes to find a spot, but. It's whew, not worth it. Yeah. It's not worth it. Yeah. Uh, if you got to walk, like, and I've, I've had those moments where you just, you just feel that road rage where it's just like, you will always feel better. When you like take a moment and go, I'm going to let this person have this, even though I want it. And yeah. Instead of like doing the Karen moment that you're going to get a- enraged and angered, feel shitty like in that moment. Like playing chicken with them to yeah. get into that spot. And you're gonna, first of all, you're going to work yourself up. You're going to get anxiety. You're going to feel rage and mad. And you're going to say things. And then afterwards, you will be embarrassed, whether it was videotaped or not, about yeah. like having done that. Instead, just go, I'm just going to do this for this person. And you will end up feeling much better about yourself. That's true. Giving like, op- it's like, it goes back for like opening the door for someone when you're in a rush, especially when you're in a rush, especially when you're feeling impatient, especially yeah. when like you, you feel like uh, dismissed by whatever it is like giving other people attention. It's always a great way to combat and, that stuff. And the opening door thing is like, it's so, I do it all the time. It's just habit. And I can't, I can't tell you what it does. Like for, it's the weirdest thing to me when someone just like lets a door close in your face when you're right behind them. It's just such a weird dismissive sort yeah. of like, oh, I guess I'll just go. I've fuck caught myself. myself a couple of times where I'm I have been in a rush. I go in and then I don't think and like the door has like slammed and, and it would be like this nice old woman. I'm like, I'll stop and be like, oh God, I'm so sorry. We, we didn't realize someone's <laughs> no, behind re- you. Yes, yeah. But I've done like, it. Yeah. It's just like holy shit. I, I have one thing to ask you if this is a Karen thing, because I need to know if I need to correct my behavior. Okay. Um when someone parks like a f- complete asshole takes up like parking spots. I have been known to leave like a you park like an asshole note on their window. And then I run so they don't know who left it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I don't think that's a Is that a Karen thing? Is it a psychotic thing? Do I need to let it go? It's a little bit of both. Like an OCD okay. thing. It's an OCD thing. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's probably that, it. First too. of all, that person is being an asshole. Right. Uh, are you not minding your own business? Well, listen, I'm going to say no because then I'm totally a Karen because like especially the people listening I've call out people all the time yeah. you know like especially on this podcast Bachelor Nation people we, we they say and do things I've addressed it we've talked about it yeah uh, I've been critical of people I think in this case you had the best intentions right I don't know what you wrote it usually just says you park like an asshole that's exactly what I write like word for word yeah 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 but you didn't call the manager of the store to have them come out to tell the guy. That's the true. No, that's true. I just left him a passive <laughs> and aggressive this, note. This, this and wh- by the way, never. They're probably still gonna, parking like that to this day. All of them. I don't I'm not think, changing anyone's mind, but I, it just feels good. I don't think it is because let's talk like the, the coffee Karen. Mm-hmm. Was the girl wrong by saying, hey, you should be wearing a mask? No, not at all. She was correct. Yeah. You know, so listen. It was the lady wrong who called me out at the Whole Foods. I mean, she's kind of annoying, but technically I should have been. Right. I think it's just the people who um, who, who react in a sense of entitlement and those when they're called out. Obviously, these situations where, you know, from the, 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 the racist things were like that, that one story where this woman saw a group of black people barbecuing and called the cops on them. Yeah, in and, the park. And it was like, yeah, this is illegal. When you like are accusing people of crimes, um, are you familiar with the uh, Stasi Schroeder story, the Vanderpump Rules stuff going on? Um, So I know about it, obviously. I know she got fi- I, She called the cops on a f- co-worker. Uh, yeah, someone black, from the show. Right? Yeah. Who was black. Um, and tried to accuse her of a crime. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just fucked up. It's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, it's just... And, you know, and people have have debated, like, well, it, it had nothing to do with... I, I don't care who she called the cops on. That's fucked up. Right. You, to accuse someone of a crime, and not, like, jaywalking, 
a real crime. Yeah. Now you add to the element. What was of, the crime? I don't know enough about uh, this. I think joke. theft of some sort. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Right? And then you add to it, it came out in a climate where Brianna Taylor was murdered in her home. Yeah. Who, you know, serving a warrant and like went on, they, they basically tried to arrest the wrong person. Went to the wrong house. And yeah. Went to the wrong house and killed someone. That adds that element of the climate that we're in. But regardless, yeah, that, it's, it's a bad so, idea to be. It's like where does where does that even search your mind to begin with to do something like that? But then to like you said to add to it, especially like the Amy Cooper situation. Like you, when once you're getting police involved in something, you don't you know unless it's a real. If someone's breaking into your house, call the cops, right? Like if you're at home and someone's breaking it, call the cops. If yeah, so, you know, like if they, there's reasons to actually call the cops. Um, yeah, but is, is is Stassi a Karen or is that just being? A bad person. It feels like it's just being an asshole. I mean, that's what it sounds like. Um, I I right? feel like she could be a Karen, though. Yeah, probably. I mean, was it? I don't want to make you explain the story to me because I know I should know it better because I've heard. But was it like it was actually a crime that happened, and she just said, "Oh, my coworker." I, I don't want. I bet. It, might, it doesn't like, make much in sense. I'm not trying to, by the way, no. I'm not at all giving her any, um, uh, getting her off on, uh, like, well, any she went on this. Bitch Bible, which I had, uh, her on, on my podcast, which, uh, oh, doesn't this the ex? She went on a, ooh, yeah, she went on a podcast to brag about. It. So that's the thing. It wasn't even a lapse of judgment. That's what makes her kind of like terrible. Care, yeah. Is that here she had this catty moment. She called the cops on, uh, this girl she knew didn't commit a crime. Well, that's the, I mean, I, that, it's, it's inexcusable to call and the it, cops on someone you know didn't commit a crime, period. Yeah, like, a real, no, and, and this here's a crime. And yeah. then, and then goes on this podcast and bragged about this story and then tried to keep it going. It was like, oh, we should also, like, if you're out there, just so you know, you should, you know, yeah, she's still out there. So it was she, like, it was. So she's just an asshole. She sucks. Yeah. I and think, right? probably think she's somehow being funny. I mean, I don't, that's not the excuse, but like, I don't know if her, in her mind, if that's what I'm doing, like, oh, you guys, I'm just stoking these fires. I'm just stirring up. It's like, no, this is a, some, like, this is a crime. And you, it's a crime to false, falsely accuse someone of a crime. Yeah. Like that's, I don't know. It's Especially just, knowing yeah, that maybe if you she were, is a full on Karen. Yeah. Like I mean, a I real mean one. I mean, I, I was on her podcast, Stasi's years ago and she was nice to me at the time but uh you hear these stories that she's can be rather cruel right to, to people yeah and in this situation yeah i don't know yeah there's almost like this uh like mean girls grow up to be karens maybe yeah well uh, did the the some people have been trying to identify where karen came from and, and mean girls the movie was one of the apparently uh moments where uh, it was identified as like a Karen. Or did they call uh, someone Karen Chrissy? What was it? Yeah, oh wait, hold on, I'll play the video for you. She asked Katie, if you're from Africa, then why are you white? And the other girl says, you can't just, Karen, you can't just ask people if they're white. <laughs> <laughs> that started it, that's probably it. And that's like, like yeah, there's like people say that that's kind of like the start of the Karen movement. You can't just ask people if they're white. Karen. Well, you know, listen, I, I always try to put some sort of spin on uh, how can we learn from from this. I feel like we've covered this and addressed this trap in a hopefully positive way. But listen, if you have these moments in your life where you feel stressed, anxious, you're running late or whatever, chances are, uh, as Chris Rock would say, just let it slide. Yeah. Just if you can let it slide you'll be take that deep breath take that deep breath you're not going to care uh as much as you do in the moment five minutes later you're not and if you still do a few days later then maybe you need to talk to someone <laughs> yeah. you know if it's a small thing and you're still and worked i up will about do it. that i'll work myself up yeah. about that or i will write something and then like you know 20 minutes go by i'm like i don't give a shit yeah it's not gonna matter to me i know and it's funny how you know and sometimes and maybe even that's another thing you can do if you're like if people are in that in that mental state and wanting to, you know, go off about something, like write it down and look at it later and go, oh, okay, before you hit send, you know, take another look at it. Like treat it like you're writing an ex-boyfriend or an ex-girlfriend. And did you really want to say all that? Okay, maybe you didn't. And just and then you can just delete that 
Not that it's always emails. Obviously, a lot of these people don't have time to delete it because they get right in people's faces on on uh, on camera. But uh, yeah. walk away first. If, if you think you're at risk of being a Karen, just a couple best practices. One, uh, avoid making yourself a big deal on your birthdays. Let people, like always let someone go in front of you in line at a Starbucks. Be like, oh, were you here first? No problem. I know. Yes. Like, even if you're like, oh, you, you, you were in front of me or like at a grocery store when you're like waiting for like the the meat person or like or the deli person. It's no, Who's it's first? nothing to you. To, I don't even know if I was first, but please go ahead. Yeah. It's like, nothing just, to you to just let. It's nothing to you. And it's a great opportunity to never uh, avoid being and like, again, real random acts of kindness go a long way to avoid Karenness. That's true. I mean, if you think about the woman that coughed in people's faces in that coffee shop, but she just would have turned around and walked out. Or just say, you know, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Wow. Imagine, imagine that. Imagine <laughs> that. Um, I still am trying to. I would. I. I mean, I. I don't. I would love to talk to that girl and be like, just what were you thinking in that? Yeah. Moment? Like, what were you feeling? Did she ever? Was there like an interview with her? Not or that I don't know. She probably just went to a dark place. Yeah, because I like the Amy Cooper came out and tried to. She sort of, Ruined. sort of tried to apologize, but it didn't come out they, well. No, at all. And that's not. I mean, I'm not worried about the statement. I want, like, even in like, not on the podcast, but if I, and she would never be on. Like, but I just want to sit down and go. What what was going? Tell me your what head. was going through your head in that moment. Yeah. Like, what were you feeling? Was it rage? Was it embarrassment? Was it pride? Like, what was it? Yeah. Like, I want to be her therapist. Yeah. In that moment, to find out what drove you to do that. Yeah, and you almost had like, did something happen to you that morning? Yeah. That just just set, set you into some set you crazy, off. yeah. Um, and also to the you know to the people out there named Karen, I'm sorry <laughs> that you're going through this moment. Yeah, <laughs> we know there's some really wonderful Karens, there are wonderful Karens out there. Because most of the people who are Karens aren't named Karen. <laughs> no, I in fact, I don't know if any of them are. No, <laughs> none of them are named Karen. Yeah, I have a, someone that follows me on Twitter had uh, sent me a, a photo of her aunt Karen marching in Black Lives Matter rally, you know, protest. And she had a big sign up that said Karen's for, for BLM. And I was like, there we go. Like, you know. Um, well, Sarah, thank you for coming. Uh, can we spend a few minutes talking about you being a New York Times best selling author? Oh gosh, we sure can. I mean, why not? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, what uh share with the audience uh about your 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 writing? Um I so I've written two books and my first one um I mean, the titles are <laughs> Life as I Blow It and Has Anyone Seen My Pants? They're obviously not very serious books. So if anyone's looking for some quarantine reading, uh, you know, I'm proud of them. Um, fun books with some heart, I definitely think. Um, and yeah, my uh, first one was number five on the New York Times bestseller list, which was very exciting. Um, so... Are they I, are they like fictional stories or what? No, they're they're nonfiction. Yeah. They're just um, I mean, I don't want to say like a memoir because it I'm not like <laughs> a person that should have a memoir. Uh, but just, you know, as a comedian and someone that has like, you know, worked and writing and and really loves to write, I um I just was like, oh, I can I, well, back when I used to be on Chelsea Lately, mm -hmm. um, which was on E. Uh, a book agent reached out to me and he was like, I just think you're funny and you have this great, you know, sense of humor and voice. And let's see, do you want to write a book? And I'd always wanted to, but I just didn't know how to go about it. So um, someone championed me to do it, which was awesome. And there's just stories about like my first one's like I grew up in Arkansas, moving to Los Angeles, and it's just sort of like fumbling my way through my 20s and stuff. And then my second book, um, Has Anyone Seen My Pants, is a little more adult about like being in my 30s and newly single. And then I met my husband halfway through writing it. And that oh, kind of made the whole book fun. a little different. Um, so yeah, it came out and a lot of people would, would read it and then like immediately said they would go to my social media to make sure I was still with the person that the book ended with. Cause I was like, who knows what's going to happen. Hey. Um, but so they're true stories and, um, you know, I, I, I hopefully relatable to people. It was my main thing. I just want to write something for people to you know, relate to. Um, well, Sarah, I really appreciate you you coming on. Um, it's been a fun topic to talk about. Uh, anything else you want to plug while you're here? Um, just, you know what? Stand-up comedy will soon come back. <laughs> I, or maybe it won't. I don't know. But dates will be on my website when they are. Uh, back, we'll make sure to, and, and where can, on social? Uh, at Sarah Colonna one 
C-O-L-O-N-N-A with two N's um, on Instagram because someone got there first. God damn it. Yeah. Have we tried to get it? Um, No. You don't care that much? No. I'm like, now it's just on there. It's fine. Um, And uh, Sarah Colonna on Twitter. All right. Uh, Well, people, thank you for listening. Um, I hope you enjoyed this topical conversation about Karen. Don't be a Karen. Don't be a Karen. And Karens, we are... are (laughs) You're probably, you know, I quite honestly, I would it's probably safe to say that the Karens of the world out there, the actual ones named Karen, yeah. are probably very delightful and very like hypersensitive. Oh, totally. Like every Karen in the world is just like, don't be a bitch. Don't like, don't be rude. Even about something they like have the right yeah, to be Yeah, they have upset the right about. to be upset about. Yeah. Like, well, I don't They're like, like please, no. Like, yeah. I'll just like everyone, like, uh, you know, everyone gets a slice of the cake before they yeah. do until the cake's gone. Yeah, no, please, just, just run please, into, yeah, just whatever, whatever into my car. It's fine. Just run yeah, into my yeah, car. Just, it's fine. Me. It's, it's just fine. a big dent. Okay, my insurance will cover it. It's totally fine. <laughs> fine. Um, yeah, listen, let it slide, people. Uh, the world will be at a better place uh, if you just... Um, That's good advice. Try to uh, try get, take a breath and... Uh, you know, but if you are calling a call call center, call back. <laughs> yes, yeah, for Def- sure. Definitely call back. Otherwise, yeah. they'll, they'll they'll screw you up. <laughs> um, thanks for listening. Don't forget to send in your questions at asknickacastme.com. Cast with the K for our Ask Nick episodes on on Mondays, and we will see you next time. <laughs>